in many ways our education system is in a very bad shape um, in in many aspects um, and as a society we have also deeply uh, internalized some of the colonial and marxist ideas uh, and we are only beginning to reconnect uh, back to our civilizational roots uh, do you think that our educational heritage can actually guide us um, as we try to fix the way in which uh, we impart education uh, in india today yes absolutely that is the whole reason why i have written one more book on the same topic of educational heritage it is not just to say that oh we were the greatest but we can use that to find our way to the right kind of education to to motivate ourselves so until now the education system which is a remnant of the colonial system has made it has made very little effort to infuse civilizational pride in the indian students so national pride is important indians are uh, need to be national uh, pride of uh, proud of their nation but we should also remember that ours is the only continuous living pluralistic civilization uh, unlike the other uh, ancient civilizations like the greek the persian or the sumerian or the mesopotamian they were all annihilated by uh, by the monotheistic creeds and we ours is the only ancient civilization which is still intact in the sense that we are still practicing our religion we still have our festivals and traditions so we must be proud of what our ancestors achieved in our in every discipline and i think we should use that to we should adopt the best ideas and put them into our current education system so this our heritage will help us to find our way back now the new uh, nep the national education policy has introduced uh, some good things like it has mentioned the need to have a uh, rootedness and pride in india uh it it also talks about the rich diverse knowledge systems of india and traditions and all that it but i don't know how well it will be implemented how is this civilizational rootedness going to be uh, uh brought into every student we need a completely fresh multidisciplinary approach to history all of the old assumptions about chronology uh the european translations of our texts they need to be revised they need to be revisited we need new textbooks on history social studies literature and our textbooks must present a holistic picture of the indic civilization which encompass the knowledge system traditions and culture we need to see uh, how the common people understand their own culture we need those frameworks i am not saying exclude the uh, outsiders framework completely it is useful at a, at some stage we should know about it but that's not the only thing we should be taught if the only way history is taught is from the colonizers gaze or the marxist gaze then you are excluding the core of knowledge and and you are projecting the fringe as the core so i would say we must introduce courses on the great books of india students should know what are the great books of india like the ramayana mahabharata bhagavad gita the the principal upanishad yoga vasishta nyaya natya shastra the selected sanskrit plays they should know what are the great books of india and they should know what is in them so today if you ask a student to give a summary of uh, do you know what is in natya shastra they won't know right most young indians would would struggle to reply if they are asked to summarize the significance of the uh, shastras or literary works so we need courses to be taught on the history of indian sciences also apart from shastras uh, the literary shastras we need the history of indian sciences including medicine music arts architecture town planning water management navigation uh textiles we need histories of all these also to be included and then we should not just know the names of aryabhatta and sushoda we should know what did they do what did they write what did they say uh put it in simple form if you like but the students should be taught that unless the students themselves see that you know the scientific and the systematic underpinnings of the sankhya and the nyaya vaisheshika philosophies unless they see what's in the ayurvedic texts and the logical rules laid out by uh, panini you know the grammar and Un- unless to see all that decolonization will not happen and indians will continue on the path which has been laid out by macaulay so we need hundreds of textbooks to be written in the coming years and i want to contribute to that effort so for decolonization to happen we need textbooks which uh, which completely ch- change the framework which give you your own eyes back we take out the westerners outsiders gaze and get our own eyes so that's what we need it is indeed i mean the 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 vastness and 
the richness, I think, of the ideas uh, spanning across various fields, be it art and culture or science and technology and uh, the traditions of debate. Um, I think there is so much that uh, Bharat as a civilization uh, should inform uh, uh, India as a nation today. Um, and only then can we uh, sort of uh, seek and uh, fulfill our full potential. Um, thank you so much, Sahana ji, uh, for a very brilliant and very inspiring um, uh, ideas that you have shared with us and the insights that you have shared with us. And I'm sure our viewers have a lot to think about. Uh, there is so much we have to go back and um, read and understand about our civilization. Uh, but you have given us the inspiration to do that. Uh, I'm very grateful to you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be part of this. And we are all in the same journey together. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.